The class name is GUI.java. Go back up there. That's if you hover over it. That's because you haven't put in action performed yet. So that's what it's talking about. Where do I need to put in action performed? That happens at the bottom. I put in action performed right below, um, right after public void. Action performed. You said action preformed, which is a different one. So P E R. Yes. That's one thing that uh, you have to watch out for is that make sure you spell action perform just right because you're actually writing over the top of one that's already been pre-done. So make sure you notice that this is a capital P that has to be done. And it has to be spelled exactly correctly or else it's going to complain that you don't have an action performed and it will keep that error there. All right, so I'm able to click in general, but how do I figure out which button in particular was the one that I clicked on? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a basically a temporary holder for which button it was that I clicked on. And then I'm going to go walk through all the thing, the buttons that I currently have in my grid. And I'm going to say, hey, were you the one that was clicked? Hey, were you the one that was clicked? And as soon as I find the one that was clicked on, my temporary holder is going to assign himself to that one. So I'm going to create a J button. I'll call it current. And for now, I'm just going to leave that. By the way, if I try and do something with current right now, I'm going to get a null pointer exception because current hasn't been created yet. Next. I'm going to use a pair of for loops to walk through my entire grid of J buttons and see which one it was that was clicked on. So I'm going to grab these two for loops and just use those and put in the corresponding close braces. And then for each thing in buttons IJ, I'm going to compare it to the event source as to whether or not it was clicked on. So in this for loop, let me put in and i, and j, and action performed. I should check to see what the source of the click was. I can find that by saying event dot get source and say, hey, does that equal buttons? I, J. Is there a shortcut for that? No, unfortunately there is not. <coughs> so the action event contains who the object was that you clicked on. So if you clicked on a button, it would tell you which uh, button it was. If you um, had a text field and you hit enter in the text field, it would say, hey, this was this particular text field. And so I'm comparing it to each of the things in my buttons array to see which one it is. I can't use two equal signs because if you have an object, which is what a button is, um, you can't use two equal signs. Only primitive types can use the two equals. So let's see, what should I do with this? Maybe I'll set current equal to that thing. And something else I should do just to see if it's working is I'm going to set the text on this button to be X. So what this does is this goes through each of the buttons in my array. As soon as I find the one that had the mouse click on it, I'm going to set its text to be X.
You named your event EV. You should name yours EV then. Preformed is a different event than performed. It's performed, P E R, not pre R E. Preformed means you made it beforehand. All right. So this is how you actually make button presses do something. So now that we've got this particular button, we can actually do something with it and then start using our code from the previous project. So another thing I might want to keep track of is the x and y positions of this thing too, so I can put that in my grid. So I'm going to do int x equals 0, int y equals 0. And then when I find the current thing, <coughs> I'm going to set x to i, y to j. And I should probably also set grid x, y equal to, well, I forgot my constants, but I'm going to use a similar thing, which is going to be the blank x and o. So I'm going to just say x for now. It's going to complain until I put that in. So I need to put in the final constants like we did in the previous project. Basically, what we're doing here is everything we had before, which had to do with playing in a particular spot, we're going to do here in the action performed event. Or if you find that particular one, you might make another method that you call here. So inside the if statement, that's where you know which row and column you're in and which button you've clicked on. So at this point, what I'd probably want to do is check to see if there's a win. That sounds vaguely familiar to the previous project. You might want to keep track of whose turn it is so that you can change the text from an X to an O um, based on whose turn it is. You probably want to check for ties at this point as well. So all of these things that we've done in the previous tic-tac-toe project now you have a place to put those things. So that's the main difference between the previous project and this project. At this point, I think I'm going to give you just time to work on what we've got so far. So make sure that you can get buttons to work. And then start looking at your previous one and putting that code into this project as well. I'll show you how to do artificial intelligence later on.